Hey guys, today we are going to talk about some foil cards and the foil prices are always a little bit more insane than the, the regular card prices. So when you have a foil card, it is possible to buy for 83 cents and then have it go up to $4. Foils on the reserve list especially have the potential to spike up in price even though they may not be the best. 7th edition is a incredibly valuable set as is 5th dawn for foils given that 7th edition is one of the first editions that had foils and 5th dawn has artifacts now random cards that are foil given the fact that they are played in some EDH decks can go up in price and old cards old foils will always be valuable they will always have value and we will end with the Amarquette. So Hickory Woodlot, this used to be 83 cent foil. Why this is relevant today is because it's actually one of a bunch. Foil lands are very good. So if you have the opportunity to pick up foil lands in a trade or for a good deal, you should pick them up because some people will want them for EDHs. Now, even though this land is not at all impressive, if you can get it in foil, it's $4. It used to be $0.83, cents, now it's $4. Very impressive card in terms of growth rate. And now that people... And the great thing about this is Mercadian Mask. Very old set. Not many foils from Mercadian Mask exist given the supply. And foils were a lot different back then especially for rares and uncommons, they would replace the rare or uncommon and not the common. So they were more valuable, if you will. Next, we will talk about foil reserve list cards. So let's take a look at the price difference on this card. The average price is 58 cents, but I'm sure you can find it on pennies on a dollar. The foil price is $21. This card is on the reserve list. Okay, let's repeat that again. The card is on the reserve list, therefore the foil is $21, but the non-foil is $0.58. Cents. Does that mean the non-foil should be $0.58? Cents? Probably not. It is an interesting scenario, uh, something that is you can run infinite combos into and definitely an EDH. But since there's such a big price gap, it's compelling. Normally the price gap is the other way around where the non-foil is very close to the foil price and therefore the foil prices may be underpriced. Here, we got the opposite scenario because of the reserve list. Mana Breach. Uh, Mana Breach is a 23 cent regular card and a $5 foil. Seventh edition has been a haven, an absolute haven, and we are gonna look at a $90 foil at the end and seventh edition, if you can guess what it is, I would be shocked because I did not realize it was 90, 80, 90 dollars, but it is. But seventh edition, the set was overall weak. However, the foils are quite valuable. Uh, this is a five dollar foil. You literally could have picked it up from the trash can back in the day. It's not a card that particularly sees a ton of play. Maybe it's nice. Sometimes it's just nice to own the cards in case they do spike. And that's what happens with me is I just own so many cards and my philosophy now, especially with older cards, is not to sell them or older foils. Just hold on and eventually they go up in price. All right. Talking about big price differences, 26 cents for the non-foil and 10 bucks for the foil. Foil artifacts are like foil land. You want them and you want to hold them because you never know what's going to happen. Foil land really great in the EDHs, even if the land itself is not good, eventually someone will want to buy it or trade for it. The same with foil artifacts because it can be played in so many more decks, right? That's a key component. That's a key difference between lands and artifacts. Different decks, different colors, still all have lands and artifacts. So it gives you more flexibility. So Clock of Omens, good card. Is it a $10 foil? It's uh, whatever you, whatever someone is willing to pay you for it. And if it's $10, it's $10. Now let's move on to something that is as interesting. 
Kami of False Hope. This card has been trending up from 10 cents. It looks like 20 cents to almost 39 cents. And the foil is getting a little pricey. I like it. I mean, I like old foil. I like old cards that have interesting abilities and mimic other creature cards. So Spore Frog is the card I have in mind. And that was essentially the green version of this card. This is um, something day, something blank day, and then the spore frog is just a fog. This is like, I've never played that card, but it pretty much does the same thing. Something blank days of something. And this card has been going up in price. It's a decent card, but foils are where the market will go to because there's so little copies of these. Even Kamigawa, there's just not as many copies, not as many foils. And when we talk about Makati Mask, there's not many foil Makati Mask cards. So that's why you see such a huge difference between the foil price and the non-foil price. If you got a foil version of this, that meant you didn't get a rare, right? So therefore you would value this card slightly more because it replaced your rare. Um, you didn't get the addition. It's not like today where you can get a rare and a foil rare or a mythic and a foil mythic. Now, back in the day, if this was your foil rare, you didn't get a regular one, which would be kind of crappy. But needless to say, $13 for probably the ugliest artwork I've ever seen. Uh, $13 and then a 35 cents. So the huge, there's a huge price gap between it and really depends on supply. Older sets like Macadian Mass do extremely well in terms of uh, having the maximal price bridge that you can have between foils and non-foils. All right, so we are going to go down to Sleight of Hand, which is an $88 card. What the blank? What the blank? You have to understand, in 7th edition, and Lorwyn, Ponder, and we had Ponder. 7th uh, edition was that Macadian Mask. It's close, right? We had Brainstorm. So no one played Sleight of Hand because you had Brainstorm and you had Ponder and you had just numerous other stuff. Even when we had Gitaxian Probe, you would never play Sleight of Hand over Gitaxian Probe. Maybe you played both, but you would never play one over the other one, right? Um, but a foil Sleight of Hand is now $88. Has this taught me anything about the magic economy? Yes. It has taught me that you need to get foils of cantrips and hope that Sleight of Hand is banned, so then something else becomes super valuable. Sleight of Hand, $4, ticking up. So it is, its regular price is ticking up. It's one of the better cantrips in blue. It's hard to say, right? It's hard to say that this is a good card. It's hard for me to say that when we just got good tax and pro banned and Ponder's already banned and we don't really have Brainstorm in this format. But it's the best we have. It is the best we currently have, and that's why you see such a expensive foil. That's why Sly of Hand as a card, no matter what edition, has been tracking up in price steadily and steadily, and it has no, it's not going to stop. The only two things that can stop it is an unbanning of Ponder, get taxing probe, or it falls out of favor. But people like blue. And this card is really never going to fall out of favor as long as it is the best cantrip. Which you can argue it is, you can argue it's not, but you're going to play it. You will play this card in blue. You can ar argue Serum Visions is better than this. But any deck that wants Visions wants four copies of this as well. Because eight copies of a card is a lot better than... Even though Slive Hand is slightly weaker. I mean, it's hard to tell, right? Depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Anyway, that is it. Leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.